pray with me? Holy God, as you revealed yourself that day on the mountaintop, we humbly ask that you might do so again here in this moment and in this place. O oh Lord, by the power of your Holy Spirit, show yourself to us in all your glory. Lord, let these words I'm about to speak be but a small part of that revealing so that we might hear what you have to say and we might be transformed by it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So this week, I've had one of those weeks where this word has come up multiple times. Uh, sometimes I think God does this to me during weeks when I'm preparing for a sermon. It's a word, I guess it's an old word, but it's a word I hadn't heard too much recently, or I hadn't heard too much until recently. Onboarding, it's called. Onboarding, like when you're starting a new job, they now say that they, they call that onboarding the new employee. I guess this goes back to the management jargon in business for several decades, but for me, it's a fairly new word, and yet it has come up multiple times. Uh, there, Marnie is getting a, involved with an organization, and they had their onboarding meeting that she had to has to arrange and go through. Uh, we have. Um, uh, a family member who's just getting a new job and we were celebrating that with him and he was talking about the corporate team that was going to do his onboarding in the coming days yeah. and so this is a time in which you learn sort of what it means to be a part of that new organization right it's a way they help transition you from where you were to what you're going to be a part of and you know even though i don't we didn't use this word when we were talking this week gloria and i were talking she's been helping me think through uh, a new uh, an experience where a class we're creating i'm trying to avoid calling it new member because we're trying not to name it that uh, it's called starting point and uh, it's something i didn't put in the announcements but starting on the 13th of march we're going to have four classes two in march two in april uh, that are intended as, a, as an opportunity for people who are either new to our church or people who've been around but want to get reacquainted with what it is we do, what we believe, and what the points of contact there are. Where are places you can plug in to the life of this church and our activities and our ministries and the other things we do? Starting Point is going to be coming. If you're interested in that, there's a sheet on the, on the table uh, back over here in the, in the narthex that you could look at with more information about that. But that's also a kind of onboarding. We're trying to look for an opportunity to help you, whether you've been here a long time or whether you're relatively new, if you're interested in becoming a part of more deeply in the life of this church, or you just want to learn more about what it is we do, uh, I invite you to be a part of that. So this word, this idea has been with me all week of, of how we bring people into understanding, like, what is it we're all about? What are the basics? What are the key essential things? Because we have a lot of questions. And we have questions whether we're new or whether we've been around a long time. It's particularly around our faith, don't we? We have questions that we want answered. We, we have questions about who God is and what it means to be a Christian. We have questions as we watch the news about why God would allow the things to happen that we see happening out there in the world. We have questions as our lives are impacted by things going on, things that are good, but more often things that are difficult. These raise up for us all kinds of questions that we want answered. And it is good to remember the core, the basics, to come back again to what it is that is central to who we are and what we do. And the disciples that day in the story, those three of them that went up with Jesus on the mountain, they, they had also had many questions. If you read the gospel stories, they're full of questions. Who is this guy? Who is this man? What is it that he can do these things he does? And even though they would say to Jesus, and just a few verses before what we read, Jesus asked the question many of you have heard before, who do you say that I am? And they've said properly and correctly, you are the Messiah, the Christ. Still, they were not clear completely on who he was. Like much of the world, they looked at Jesus and they wondered, is this just a very wise man? Is this just a powerful spiritual leader? Or is there something more? To who he is. Well, up on that mountaintop, as God was preparing to open the door to what would come through Easter, as God was preparing that, he kind of brought them inside to see what it was all about. 
It was sort of a spiritual onboarding for the disciples that they were gathered there in that moment with Christ so they could get the fundamentals down. They could see exactly what was core to who they would be. And there were two things that happened there. You know, they saw all those miraculous things that Kathy recounted for us that we heard read in the scripture about Jesus's transfiguration, his glorious presence being revealed, the presence of Moses and Elijah, that cloud coming down. But here's what God said when he spoke. The father said, this is my son. Listen to him. And kind of in that command, we have the core idea of what it is and who we are and what we're all about here. Jesus Christ is God. That's what that means. When God the Father says, this is my son, he is saying, this is also God. This person, this man you have seen, this man you have walked with and watched and learned from, he himself is God. So listen to him. Now there's kind of like a whole sermon in that first statement. Right? Jesus Christ is God. And that's a sermon that come back another Sunday and we'll go deeper into because I want to talk to you this day about that second part of that command because I think that's the that's the key to understanding who we are and what it is we're all about here listen to him listen to Jesus listen to Jesus is the operating instruction is the is the way we orient all we do and all that we are as Christians. The question we can always ask, if we're ever wondering, are we doing the right thing? The question can always be, well, have I listened to Jesus? Am I listening to Jesus? Is what I'm doing in line with what Jesus has said to me? Now, there are kind of two parts of listening. Uh, one of them is actually paying attention to Jesus. So Marnie and I, this week, we celebrated uh, six years since we met. And uh, in, that, in that, we have moved to a place in our relationship where we've, invented, where we've adopted a new game. The game is called, Did You Hear Me? <laughs> and I am often the one who is starting the game uh, by not listening when she says something to me. I'll be busy, I'll be distracted, I'll be doing something else, and Marnie will be saying something to me. And often she'll realize I wasn't listening when I asked her a question about the thing we were just talking about a few moments before. And yet, while she was talking, I was probably doing this. Uh-huh. Yeah. All right. Good. Yeah. I looked like I was listening, but I wasn't paying attention. We do that with God, don't we? Don't we do that all the time with God? We, we look like we're listening to what God saying to us. We look like we're involved in this life of faith. We look like from the outside, we're going to church on Sunday morning. Maybe we're going to Bible study. Maybe we're praying regularly throughout the day, but are we really paying attention to what God is trying to say to us? Are we really listening to what he has to say? Or are we just kind of going through the motions? I'll tell you this, you know, it's kind of embarrassing when I have to fess up to Marnie that I wasn't paying attention to what she said, which she always knew, knows before I say it, right? I really don't want to have to do that with God. I don't want God to come to me one day and go, were you listening? And have to go, well, yeah. I was busy. Are we paying attention? And the simple, the most simple thing that God can teach us to help us answer all of our questions is this, listen to him and are we listening? Do we spend time listening, reading his word, worshiping fully present, not just here and distracted? Do we spend time in prayer? Prayer, yes, that involves telling God what's on our heart, but also prayer that is just sitting in his presence and listening and waiting for him to speak. We have to pay attention. And then we have to actually do what he says. You know, uh, any parent can, can know the difference between a child listening to you and a child listening to you, right? The child hearing what you've told them and them doing what you've told them. And probably many of us as adults will confess that we've been in that same situation where we, we heard, we understood, we paid attention, every word made sense to us and yet we just didn't listen, right? We didn't do what someone told us to do. 
And in a lot of areas in our lives, that's okay. We are free adults. We're free to make choices. But if we are the ones who call on the name of Jesus Christ and say, you are my Lord, you are my King, when we know what he has told us to do, we need to listen and put it into action. There is an English uh, preacher by the name of John Stott who wrote a book that I'm uh, going to be using to, to, with some of our teenage members to talk about the basis of our faith called Basic Christianity. And in that book, he tells this story about having someone coming to him and saying, you know, I'm really struggling with my faith. I really don't know what I believe. Uh, I don't know if I can live the way that I'm supposed to live. And, and he said to him, and John Stott said to this young man, well, if I could convince you unequivocally that everything the Bible says about Jesus is true, if I could convince you that he is who he says he is, would you then do what he tells you to do? And the young man said, I don't know. The problem he had was not understanding, it was obedience. And that is often the same thing in our faith. The problem we often have in our faith is not that we don't understand what God calls us to do, it's that we don't want to do it. And so we say we don't understand, or we come up with arguments for why it doesn't make sense. We don't listen to him. And yet there it is, the very core of what God tells us. Jesus, my son, is God. Listen to him. Here are some of the things you will hear. If you listen, not all of them, you will hear Jesus Christ say, I love you, for he does, every one of us. No matter what our backstory is, no matter what our past is, or even our present, he loves you. And if you listen, you will hear him say that. But if you listen long enough, you'll hear him also say this, there's some things that need to change. He loves us as we are, the old saying says, but he does not leave us as we are. Just as Jesus was transformed and transfigured on that mountain that day, listening to Jesus should transform us. And so he will say, and he will tell you, and he wants you desperately to know that he loves you. But because he loves you, he wants you to change. And so he will call you to do that if you listen to him. And he will tell you as well, that there are some things that we just need to leave to him. You know, in our life of faith, we have so many questions, so many things we don't understand. I don't understand why a nursery kindergarten in Ukraine got shelled in a war this week. I don't understand why there is cancer. I don't understand why so many things happen. And I can let that stop me from worshiping God. I can let that stop me from listening to Jesus. Or I can hear what he says. There are things that are not for you to know. Listen to me. In the midst of the pain of the world, you're not going to understand why the world has pain, but you can love the people in that pain. You can be a force and a voice for love and compassion and healing in the midst of that. That is what I have told you to do. And leave to me these things that are too high for you to understand. Listen to him. And he will tell us as well, Go let others know about me. Go tell others about the one who has called you to him. And so this day we are invited to make a decision. We are invited to decide as Peter and James and John were invited to listen to Jesus. Listen to what he says. Pay attention and spend time intentionally paying attention to what he's saying but then also to obey, also to put into action when we know what it is he calls us to do, to trust in him and to put that thing into our life, to be transformed by knowing him. That day when they came down the mountain, they, they were told not to tell anyone what they had seen. And I bet that was a great feeling. Have you ever had a secret that was great news? Like you got to carry it around and no one else knew it. It feels good, doesn't it? I mean, it's kind of exciting that, to know I know something that someone else is going to be really excited to hear pretty soon, but not yet. 
Well, we are also bearers of that secret because so many people in the world don't know this very simple thing we've been talking about this morning, this very simple thing that we read about in our scriptures that Jesus Christ is God. There's so many people in the world who don't know that or don't believe that. They don't know this thing we know, that the answers to everything that trouble us the source of strength that is bigger than ours, the, the one who has loved us from eternity and will love us forever is among us if we will call on him. We know this great thing that so much of the world does not know. And yet we are called to carry it to them. And if you struggle to figure out, well, how do I do that? You know, how do I talk to people about it? Just start with a simple onboarding. Start with the message that came on the mountain that day. Jesus Christ is God. Why don't you help me listen to him? And let's see what he says to us both. This is the secret that we get to share. This is the story that the disciples carried to the world. This today is our good news. Let's listen to him. Let's tell others. Let us pray. Holy God, we do give you thanks this day. We are grateful for the good thing that we know that Jesus Christ is God and that he loves us and he wants us to walk with him. So oh God, I pray that we might really hear that today if we struggle to hear that. And we might walk in it in obedience. Help us, by, O oh Lord, by your grace, to both hear and to do, to trust and obey, and to be your people. In his name we pray this day. Amen. One of the things Jesus tells us is to come to him. Follow me, he told those first disciples long before he took them up on the mountain. And when you are weary, when you are heavy laden, when you are burdened, he says, come to me and I will ease your burden. And so this morning I invite you as we sing our sending hymn, it's an opportunity for you to make a response to God's call in your life this day. A commitment to listen and to hear, to do and to act and an invitation to come forward if you are so called. If the Spirit is leading you this morning, I would invite you to come forward or come down from the loft. I always I neglect the choir in this call sometimes. Come down and hear the Lord speak to you. Kneel at the altar and ask for him to speak or come and receive the anointing for healing of your spirits and your bodies. Whether you come or not, I ask you to pray for each other. As we stand, as we rise together, and as we sing our sending hymn, Trust and Obey. <laughs>